everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Brooke and this is where we learn how to live life to the fullest through what I like to call mainstay living. I'll be sharing with you the journey of how I decide people are no longer fit for me in my life. I'm sharing this with you to help you possibly find peace and direction in your own lives because this is information I wish I had four years ago or even 10 to 15 years ago. The earlier you learn this information, the faster you can lead a more peaceful, successful life and grow into the best version of yourself. Why am I not friends with them anymore? Over the past seven years, I've learned how important your circle is. And after all that time, I finally cultivated a peaceful life Then probably the past just year. Over the past seven years, I've learned how important the circle you keep is. And after all that time, I finally cultivated a peaceful life. I truly believe I found happiness in the process of seeking truth, which in turn aids me in becoming my best self and helping others do that too. Why do relationships matter? Well, in the latest studies on health, it records that the number one reason people live longer is having healthy social circles. Not with 10,000 men could you do this. Loneliness also affects health and was found to be just as detrimental as chain smoking. That directly links loneliness to morbidity rates. So relationships equal a long life, AKA health. The more I've focused on my own health, the happier I've become. To understand who we pick to experience life with, we need to understand the healthiest forms of friendships. Growing up, I was called weird by pretty much everyone. You've been officially labeled a disturber of the peace. Mm. And I did not feel cool and I only learned charisma to escape that crippling social anxiety that I felt. And also stop saying things that would literally repel people. Back in 2013, my idea of friends wasn't what it is now. All my past experiences, how I was raised, how I was treated, shaped what I thought about friendships and about relationships. In 2013, my idea of friends was more like business partners just people like acquaintances to get where I was going. And then I found a friend group and they challenged that concept because they helped me through difficult things. I will help you bear this burden. And those relationships made me realize that a fellowship was actually possible. I'm thinking about Tolkien's Fellowship of the Ring. A group of travelers with a similar goal embark on a journey together. Each of them had their own past experiences and were vastly different from each other, but they could all work and fellowship together for a common goal. And we see the fellowship break when each party member either experiences a break in trust, a change in duty, or a realization that their goals were no longer aligned. And this movie is my favorite because it echoes truths of life that are so impactful. So I made this graph called the friendship scale. On one side, you've got basically business acquaintances. On the other side, you've got the fellowship. But what's in the middle? That's the idea of friendship that's the most dangerous that I call the crutch. So the idea of the fellowship comes from a biblical concept that iron sharpens iron. You go into battle together. You can see each other's blind spots even because each of you has skills that help you on a journey of accomplishing something. But what is that thing? We are here on common purpose, friend. That is where worldview plays a huge role in our relationships. One person can say, I love you and mean that for the night. And one person can say, I love you and expect a lifetime of commitment. So, what expectations are we setting in our relationships? Are we setting any? So like I said from the start, my worldview is that happiness is found in truth. So in other words, I'm seeking reality for what it is, not what I wish it was. Can you see anything? Nothing. There's nothing. Wait. The friends I keep in my life, if I am rooted in seeking truth, for instance, need to help me in that goal. Friends need to challenge you, not just view you as your past self and keep you there. Why do you fear the past? 
You are a sealed door there, not a sealed door himself. Because that isn't today's reality. That's the past. Friends need to challenge you to grow. So, to grow, we need healthy relationships. What is that? The first thing I had to realize is that people are not there to carry my burdens. That might be something they choose to do as your friend, but it is not their value. And they are not things to be used or controlled. We see this as a view people have in unhealthy habits like oversharing, manipulation, and when people are generally dishonest. For example, if I'm really pissed off and I call my friends to vent and that friend answers with ways to fix the problem, do I get angry at that friend and hang up? If I do, my problem is now theirs. A well-intentioned person with their own problems just got my problems dumped on them. Not because of anything they truly did, but because I was using them to make myself feel better about my own problems. And the moment they weren't serving my needs for them, I hung up on them and leaving them with all that negativity to deal with. Which leads to number two, don't blame others. Not only is this a lack of setting expectations, by not, for example, telling the person on the phone, hey, I need to vent, could you be a listening ear? But by not doing that, I'm letting them control my happiness and selfishly burdening them with my problems that I'm unwilling to deal with or fix myself. The moment you blame others for your needs is the moment that should cue you in that you actually have a problem that needs fixing. Emotional dysregulation refers to difficulties in managing and expressing emotions in a healthy and appropriate manner. Individuals who experience emotional dysregulation may have trouble controlling their emotional responses to situations, especially when it's intense, and it leads to their own intense and unpredictable mood swings in various ways, such as excessive anger, sadness, anxiety, or irritability. But Amir was loyal to me, not some wizard's pupil. My son, leave me. And this is not something that you should employ your friends or loved ones to fix. This is inner work that should be done by the individual. Usually it comes from trauma that has been continuously ignored, brushed under the rug, and is usually accompanied by a misunderstanding of what boundaries are and disregarding setting healthy boundaries altogether. Your emotions are not anyone's problems to deal with. They are your own. So clean your room in a way and stop expecting other people to clean it for you. If you yell at others, if you can't control your emotions or self-regulate or any of these problems are happening to you, if you can't self-regulate without uh, pornography, video games, going straight to your phone to scroll. If you can't self-regulate or any of these problems are happening to you, the best way you can start to position yourself to find better circles and be a helpful friend is to get a licensed and third-party therapist for yourself. Iron sharpens iron. Friends cannot be your crutch. They can sit with you in the fire, which is a true friend. They can fight with you. But if you're unwilling to take that hand in the fire, and get out, and that friend leaves you, you have no one else to blame but yourself. Mordor Gandalf, is it left or right? Left. Like we've said, iron sharpens iron, but a rock would dull the iron. So are you sharpening them? Are you selflessly trying to help without expecting anything back? Unless you deal with your emotional dysregulation and clean your room, you cannot be a true friend to someone. Number four, no one owes you anything. If you blame others for your problems, you will never grow to your truest potential. You can't really change others. They're not under your control. I found the most peace in realizing that the continuous actions someone does is something I can trust. And don't trust what other people say, trust what people do. And you can be more discerning of who people are that way. For example, if someone never calls you back and you're doing all the visiting and it's been that way for a really long time, 
you can't expect that person to change. You also can't expect that person to have the same definition of friendship that you do. That is who they are. And the moment I realized that, I had so much peace because their actions were no longer my burden. Number five, disagreements should not affect your self-esteem. Do you ever feel like if someone is disagreeing with you, then they are disagreeing with who you are? I have. Give Gondor the weapon of the enemy. Let us use it against him. You cannot wield it. None of us can. It has no other master. And what would a ranger know of this matter? This is no mere ranger. He is Aragorn. Gondor has no king. Gondor needs no king. That is actually linked to self-esteem or a lack of self-esteem. And can be that you grew up with parents who maybe didn't encourage you, or it could be that you had a lack of self-identity growing up, or maybe you were never understood and you feel misunderstood whenever people disagree with you. Maybe you were discouraged a lot. When two people disagree, a healthy discussion isn't throwing things back in their face and yelling, pointing out their flaws as a way to say, you're not perfect too. A healthy discussion is knowing that just because someone disagrees with your thoughts doesn't mean that they're disagreeing with you. It is a separating. There is a separation from yourself and your opinions. Your opinions are not who you are, really. They're, they're not intrinsic to your value. It's separating yourself from their opinions. If you have self-esteem to do this, there is no reason to take it personally when someone disagrees with you. And let them take your happiness. People can have their thoughts and you can have yours. And we can talk about it while respecting each other. Disagreements don't phase you in a healthy relationship if you have self-esteem. Number six, cutting out toxicity. As we've said, you can't really change people, nor should we try. But you can choose who you keep in your life. And there's a fine line between disagreeing and toxicity. When you're growing self-esteem and learning boundaries, nine times out of 10, you've already let someone into your life that is toxic. Um, narcissists, for example, are really drawn to people who are very empathetic. So, for example, you've gotta take the weeds out of the garden to help your flowers grow. Sometimes it's painful. Maybe you have trauma bonds. Maybe you've grown up with this person your whole life. But if you've tried to start over and it just won't happen in that relationship, sometimes you have to save yourself from drowning too. If the other person is pushing you under with them. I have no patience anymore for being stuck in the past and being controlled or manipulated or anyone discouraging me from being healthy. I have a story about that. My older sister and I weren't always that close. We've been in close in the past. It's hard when you've known someone for a long time but don't really know them. So the story is when my dad passed, I remember distinctly talking about these religious concepts and my sister looked at me and said, wow, I didn't know that you knew all that stuff. And I was kind of taken back because it's like, well, of course I do. I went to a liberal arts college where I took a lot of religious classes and I studied theology and religions and philosophy and I'm not the same person I was when we were teenagers and lived together. And I think she still thought of me as the girl who was living in a van with no life plan. But I had to show her that new side of myself. I had to show up as this new person to give her that new perspective of who I was. So that being said, sometimes relationships that haven't helped you grow can change. It's rare, but it happens. Number seven, unless someone gives you a reason not to, expect the best of others. I always give people chances, even second chances. I've even given people fifth, tenth, twentieth chances. That doesn't mean you don't forgive people, right? That doesn't mean that you don't love them from afar, you don't respect them, 
and wish them well. But I trust the information I get back. I don't overshare now. I'm careful with what I say unless they earn that level of relationship with me. They have to earn my trust. If by their actions they prove that they are not healthy for my life, I step away. And there are levels to friendships too. I'm not saying talk to someone like you just met them or have known them for 10 years, nor am I saying the business partner is a bad thing, but I don't give someone something they don't deserve anymore, nor do I keep giving if by their actions that they've, I've overstepped and trusted beyond the level of intimacy that I should have. By the way, all of that is an example of setting healthy boundaries. It's not being rude to someone and saying, you've overstepped my boundaries, how dare you? Boundaries are a control of how you react to people. Here's my list of the top people to avoid. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. Number one, fair weather friends. Friends who only show up when they want to. This type of person is never available to help. They won't cry with you when your dad dies. They won't be there when you need them. They will not be there with you in battle because battle's hard. They're only going to be there when there's a party or there's stuff to gossip about, blah, 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 blah. They're not the fellowship friends. Number two, hobby friends. These are friends who are only with you because of a hobby. Or you could call them location friends. They're only with you because of circumstances, right? Um, people who get high with friends... I would call these like hobby friends. Um, You drink with them. But are these hobbies helping you grow? Or do you only hang out with them for this hobby alone? And is that hobby going to help you grow? Something to think about. Number three, jealous friends. People of this type are the kind to encourage you until you surpass them. Then they will see you as something different altogether and discourage you. And I've had a lot of experience with this. And trust me, it sucks. Because they were once your biggest supporters. But the best thing that you can do, if, if you try, you know, if, you've, if you explain why you're continuing to grow a certain direction, which may be away from them, because they aren't doing anything, because they aren't growing, you don't even have to say that. If you keep explaining that and they keep reacting this way, the best thing that you can do is get far away from these people because they will not be encouraging anymore and they will only hold you back. I regret to announce this is the end. I'm going now. Next, fake friends. I don't know why I'm saying this like it's, ha. Fake friends. These people are kind of similar to the jealous friends but they may still act like they have your back. But behind closed doors, they do not. And they will stab you in the back if you're not careful. You spot these people with the experience of knowing the difference between dishonesty and truth. If you're actively seeking truth in your own life, you aren't lying to yourself, for instance. The human brain has evolved to recognize dishonesty, and you can grow in that discernment too. Another key is are they where you want to be? Do they give helpful advice and actively seek your best interest even when it isn't in theirs? And the nail in the coffin is, are they gossipers? Do they talk behind other people's backs to you? If they do, you can bet you will not be excluded. Fan friends. This one took me a long time long time. I know it sounds dumb, but being in the entertainment industry for a while, I've seen people want to be my friend, but they were really just, I wouldn't call them fans, but the concept is the same. They want to fawn over you instead of really getting to know you. This is where seeking truth comes into play. It's the same thing as dating. Unless you let go of your idealization of a person, you will never see someone for who they really are. If someone isn't living in reality and views you as an idealized version of yourself, they don't really love you. 
They don't love the real you. It is fake. And this is why you want to be careful with sinking truth and not living in false reality. Healthy relationships are all about allowing people to be who they are. And you can love them where they are and see their potential at the same time. But do you allow people to be comfortable around you? Do they make you feel comfortable? And this one took me a while. Do you like how they make you feel? You attract who you are. You also repel who you aren't. While you're learning self-esteem, boundaries against toxicity, and becoming your best self, don't be afraid to cut people out of your life. Then I know what I must do. It's just... I'm afraid to do it. I hear it all the time, but I'm scared to be alone. If people aren't your real friends, you already are, and you just don't know it. And it's way more dangerous to not live in reality than it is to actively seek something better. Jim Rohn says, life does not get better by chance, it gets better by change. I wish none of this had happened. So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Sometimes we lose people by choice or things out of our control. I bid you all a very fond farewell. But you do attract who you are. You want entrepreneur friends? Be one. You want an emotionally intelligent and fit girlfriend or boyfriend? Be that. But with that same measurement, be careful. Because the same measurement of what you judge, you will be judged for. You will be as rich or as successful or as healthy as the top five people you want to spend time with. Who do you spend time with? Are those top five people you spend time with the people you want to become? Change is inevitable, but growth is optional. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And until next time, I hope you take that step towards your best life and stay mainstay.